Hi, in this video tutorial I want to go over a simple natural ventilation simulation using this um, two-zone setup which is um, a corner of a building and you can see I've organized the Rhino file into a zone layer, um, a window layer with four windows and uh, some boundary condition objects because I want to make this surface and the surfaces in the back uh, adiabatic. Um, I've already laid out some um, boilerplate simulation setup on the Grasshopper canvas and um, I want to quickly kind of flick through and show you how the geometry is connected. So first here we have the two zones connected to our zone component. The windows are connected um, as well and you see there's a window to wall ratio scaling effect happening here so we um, just pass along 50% uh, or scaled down windows in this case into the window component and there we have our um, boundary condition objects which is the surface down at the bottom and then the four surfaces in the back. Um, now I'm going to switch to um, shading view and you can see these preview components um, render the zones for me and they also render the windows for me in this blue color. Um, Okay, and I want to um, simulate um, this corner uh, of a building uh, in a different climate. So I'm going to select a climate that is, doesn't ship with Climate Studio. So by selecting one existing file path, in this case, I can navigate um, to the place where I saved my climate file. And I want to do this in Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, and this is an IWAC EPW file that I downloaded from the internet. And by clicking open, we now reference this climate file and we pass this into uh, the location settings in uh, the Energy Plus simulation component. Now I want to go over some of the zone and window settings. So let's start with the zone. Um, we have a, an office um, template assigned in a sense um, with um, um, a fairly high people density and equipment density typical for office spaces. Um, there's a fully conditioned, this, this model has a fully conditioned space with a um, heating system and a cooling system and a mechanical ventilation system as well. Um, and it comes with a heat recovery system here. So um, then I, in the ventilation tab, we are really only concerned with the infiltration rate at this point, which is also fairly low, so that we are modeling a very airtight building. And then in the construction section, um, we can take a look at the U value. So this is assuming a, a lightweight timber structure uh, with a U value of 0 0.2. As you can see, kind of those um, constructions have been assigned accordingly. And now let's quickly take a look at the windows. So the windows are modeled as triple pane glass with a U value of 0 0.8 and a solar heat gain coefficient of 0 0.5. So it's again a fairly um, fairly good um, setup uh, for the envelope. Um, the assumption here is that Frankfurt is a heating dominated climate and um, therefore I want to pick a, a fairly low U value and a higher solar heat gain coefficient so I can make use of passive solar gains. And then we have a shading system uh, implemented in this case, um, which is triggered by high solar radiation on the window. Uh, it is always avail available and the set point is um, 180 watts per meter squared. Now, uh, in, in this case, I also want to take a look at uh, the ventilation settings just because we want to um, show natural ventilation properties in, the, in a second. So there's a couple of things that are relevant, uh, especially this uh, operable area ratio which um, controls how much of this surface can actually be opened. Um, and in this case, we model um, with 80%. And then there's the discharge, discharge coefficient, which for a rectangular opening is kind of in the 0 0.6 uh, to 0 0.65 range. So this is what we're assuming here. Um, these settings down below, they're only relevant if you're simulating with the Airflow network, which we will not do at this point. Okay, so now that we went through all the settings, let's actually um, run the analysis quickly. And I'm going to 
expand my canvas a little bit so that we have a little bit more real estate to play with. And there's kind of my um, analysis uh, of the results as a layout. I'm using um, the load CSR results file component to bring in energy use intensity at a monthly resolution. And then also I'm adding this, I'm summing this up to an annual total. Um, and down below, um, I'm plotting comfort hours. And that, let's take a look at how we do this. So under outputs here, I selected zone operative temperature. I unchecked normalized results by zone area because this doesn't make any sense for Celsius as a as an output variable. Uh, and then um, I, I'm getting hourly um, operative temperatures for my two zones. And I want to analyze how often these temperatures are are actually um, either above 28 degrees or below 18 and then that I want to mark this as uncomfortable. This is what I'm doing with this larger than and smaller than workflow and then I'm using a gate or component to um, kind of check whether one of those conditions is actually true. And then through this mass addition I'm getting basically all the hours within a year this space is um, uncomfortable. and this number is fairly low and we're doing this for the entire year for all hours and not just for the occupied hours. So it could possibly be that these um, instances happen at nighttime or at daytime. Um, we would need to look at the hourly data more closely to figure this out. Um, we won't do this in this tutorial. So now I want to um, get rid of this cooling load. So I know Frankfurt is a mild climate and um, there shouldn't really be a need for a cooling system because typically uh, buildings don't have it. Um, and um, I want to now use natural ventilation to um, kind of minimize this cooling load here. Let's take a look. We have, we have our site EUI is close to 90 um, kilowatt hours per meter squared per year. And we see um, our kind of cooling load plotted here on the annual bar chart as well. Okay, so what do I need to do to actually um, start the natural ventilation? So if I go into my zone settings uh, under the ventilation tab, I have a couple of, a couple of ways to actually uh, simulate natural ventilation. We'll skip over scheduled ventilation uh, and take a look at the simple airflow network components that uh, are kind of listed here under natural ventilation. And here you can model natural ventilation both with the buoyancy driven flow and the wind driven flow. So in this tutorial, we want to use buoyancy driven flow only. And we can think of this as a worst case scenario. If there's no wind at all, um, we can use, uh, we can certainly count on the buoyancy driven flow. Um, so to do this, we can turn this on and um, then uh, check buoyancy driven flow. And then we can provide some set points such as 20 degrees C. So we want the system to, or we want the model to open the windows until the interior temperature reaches 20 degrees. And then uh, the windows should be closed again. So this is kind of like trying to cool the building down to 20 degrees C. We can also specify a minimum outdoor air temperature, a maximum outdoor air temperature to kind of clamp uh, the times when this can actually happen. And we can also specify a maximum relative humidity. Um, this would be good to kind of model window closing when whenever it's raining outside. And then we can schedule this. Um, and this is set to always on. Now, um, remember this building was set up with a full um, HVAC system with uh, heating and cooling. And taking a look at these set points, actually, what we can see here is that these, these uh, systems, now we have three, the natural ventilation, the heating and the cooling system, they can start fighting each other. So now we have to um, make sure that, that the heating system and the cooling systems cannot be turned on when this building is trying to naturally ventilate. And for that, we have to develop a control strategy. And this is kind of the hardest part about the natural ventilation setup. So uh, one good way to do this would be using, for example, outdoor temperatures to predict when um, uh, the building should be in natural ventilation mode or in heating mode or in cooling mode. And we can do this um, with this workflow that I've prepared down here. So here you see we are bringing in um, a, the weather analysis component Oops, that you can find 
uh, right up here and we're using the dry bulb temperature um, to actually develop a control strategy. So first of all we want to do is set up a natural ventilation availability schedule and we can define um, this with outdoor temperatures for example so we I want in this case uh, natural ventilation to be available from 18 degrees to 26 degrees um, if it's lower than that I want my heating system to kick in if it's larger than 26 my natural ventilation potential is probably very small and therefore I want to kind of use my backup um, mechanical cooling system um, so in this case um, what we need to do then is we just analyze the outdoor temperature and check whenever it's larger than 18 degrees um, then uh, we potent potentially want to ventilate but only if, if uh, the outdoor temperature is actually below the 26 degrees so I'm using these larger and lower uh, and lower than or larger and smaller than components and I'm using a gate end component to kind of combine this into one um, kind of boolean pattern for the entire year as you see it's for 8760 values and now I just I'm just using a schedule component which is this kind of array schedule component that you see up here provide the name I set a type to fraction category to control and then um, I'm providing basically all the hour values and you see it's just auto automatically converting from true false to zeros and ones and then you can see here nicely plotted in this um, um, basically uh, heat map where you see the hours on the y-axis and basically every day plotted um, plotted on the x-axis and you see when, when natural ventilation throughout in the year would be available in this case right so only in the summer months and then uh, even here in the evenings it becomes too cold turns off uh, and then there's a couple of spots in the middle where it actually is too hot for natural ventilation and then lastly I'm passing the schedule into a library component which you can find up here um, and this basically adds this um, the schedule that I just created um, parametrically within Grasshopper to the f uh, the library within this Grasshopper file. Um, and now I need to do the same for my heating. So I have to make sure that the heating is scheduled uh, as well. Now the control logic is a bit simpler. It's just whenever it's smaller than 18 degrees C outside, then I want to, my heating system to be available. And this is the pattern that you would get from that. For cooling it's similar, I just kind of reverse logic now I'm using the larger than component and whenever it's larger than out, uh, 26 degrees, whenever it's warmer than 26 degrees outside. And then lastly I have to schedule my mechanical ventilation system availability as well and this is what you see down here at the bottom where um, I defined a mechanical ventilation availability schedule and essentially I want the system to be available whenever um, the natural ventilation um, is basically turned off. So I'm using uh, a gate not component to just flip, reverse this pattern into this um, kind of availability schedule. And all those schedules need to be kind of passed into the library and then they become available uh, through my selection menus uh, within the zone settings. So I wanna do this quickly, kind of update my settings here. So first I want to go in my, into my HVAC tab and modify the availability um, of these systems. So by clicking on this, I'm getting a schedule selector and my kind of custom schedules that I just created, they're all available right here. So I have um, my heating availability schedule and you see uh, now wherever there's white, this means uh, this is turned off here and then wherever it's black means it's turned on. So I'm gonna pick this heating availability schedule here. Then um, down here, I wanna gonna pick my cooling availability schedule and then scroll down further, do the same for mechanical ventilation and pick my mechanical ventilation availability schedule and then go into the natural ventilation tab and make this basically an option only when um, when I want this to be available. And now I basically safeguarded that these systems cannot uh, interact in a negative way with one another. 
and make sure that natural ventilation is turned on. And, and as I said, I just want to use the buoyancy driven flow um, here in this case. Hit OK. And now I basically have all my settings updated to run the natural ventilation simulation. I want to zoom out so that we can see and observe um, the changes here. So let's uh, run the simulation again. And now you see how this kind of took care of most of the cooling loads within the summer months. And it, um, it also helps with kind of the comfort inside. Now, um, obviously this is a very simplified approach, uh, especially when looking at the results. Uh, and this is a good, a good starting point, but it would be, especially if you want to look at comfort in more detail, it would be uh, advisable that we look at the surface temperatures and really try to understand what's causing these comfort hours and um, possibly look at the air change rates that um, this buoyancy driven flow actually induced. You could also try this with the wind driven flow uh, and so forth. And then finally, um, there are some really interesting um, natural ventilation simulation setups that involve airflow networks that one can play with, um, which are are available uh, through these um, workflow templates. There's an airflow network model that really showcases this in detail and possibly future video tutorials will go over these more advanced analysis techniques for natural ventilation.